Greetings, my disciples. Welcome to Find Your Path, where I help VTubers create their favorite characters into Pathfinder. With me today, I've got Little Karibo. Hello. It's exciting to be here. I'm a big fan of your musical from the 60s. <laughs> wow, I haven't heard of that in quite some time. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Like 40 days and 40 nights, maybe? Uh, uh, maybe a little longer. Maybe it feels like 40 uh, years and 40... But yeah. Oh, Anywho. like it's the equivalent of 28 days later, then it's 28 weeks later, then it's 28 months later. Well, also because of the fact that the 60s was 40 years ago. And you're a zombie. A double zombie. Came back twice. <laughs> That's impressive. Thank you. So, what a Karibu, who are we making today? Who are we making? Okay, so I have been on a big Kamen Rider kick. If anybody's been following me on social media, you know that I've been in incessantly tweeting about it or Xing about it. And uh, I started with Shin Kamen Rider, the movie that came out on Amazon Prime. But the, the first series that I watched was Kamen Rider Zero One. And I didn't love the main character of that show, but the secondary protagonist, uh, Kamen Rider Vulcan, uh, he blew my socks off, and I'm not even wearing socks. That how, that's how blown they were. I was very astounded by his presence, his passion, and his cool suit. So, uh, Kamen Rider Vulcan, aka uh, Isamu Fuwa, from uh, Kamen Rider Zero One. Kamen Rider! Kamen Rider! Kamen Rider! Kamen Rider! Kamen Rider! Rider. Shut your eyes! He's an interesting guy because when we first meet him, he's not really he's not really himself. He's sort of spoilers. Am I allowed to talk about spoilers? Well, by all means. Okay, so yes, heads up spoilers in case you've not watched this, but when you when you start watching the show, you think he's a guy with a tragic backstory. And he is a guy with a tragic backstory. When he first appears, you meet him as this agent of a, a, a group called Ames. He shows up and his whole deal is he blames AI. And when I say AI, he blames robots, essentially, for uh, a massacre that happened to his hometown that he remembers. He vividly remembers this. He was a child at school, and suddenly all these robots rose up and started slaughtering humans, and the place had to be basically nuked from orbit in order to deal with it. Anyway, it turns out, shockingly, this was all artificial memories. He's not actually got this tragic backstory. It turns out his tragic backstory is that he doesn't have a tragic backstory. He's a pretty normal guy with an average family and nothing really bad has ever happened to him. But he's got rage issues. He's kind of like the Incredible Hulk in that he uses his anger to allow him to, to transform. He's not allowed to transform into Kamen Rider Vulcan, which if you don't know anything about Kamen Rider, is basically just an Iron Man suit with fun colors and a uh, animal face uh, mm -hmm. and his is a wolf he, he is like a common rider wolf essentially in fact his first form is a shooting wolf and then he eventually upgrades to assault wolf his rage allows him to fight these robots and his rage is misplaced so he's a guy with a lot of issues he's a guy with a lot of emotional confusion convinced he's part of some sort of conspiracy and he is but it's not the conspiracy he thinks it is it's actually he's all of his anger at robots is misplaced and should be aimed at uh people the people who manipulated him so he's kind of like jason bourne in the sense that he's had his memories changed and he's a killing machine but he's he's so cool and anytime he transforms he does and he, he has to break <laughs> I feel like I'm going all over the place, but essentially he's just, he's really cool, he's really angry, he's like if Bakugo was Iron Man. You know, I never actually thought about it like that before, but yeah, he pretty much is like Bakugo Iron Man. With just a gun. an explosive short fuse. <laughs> he pulls the gun out, starts blasting. He yep. has many different guns. He has the, the little uh, sh shot riser, 
which is like a pistol, which he can use as a pistol, though nine times out of ten he just uses it to touch his belt and be like, bloop, I'm transforming now. And then he also has like a shotgun, etc., like a Gatling thing. It, it, he is very gun focused and I'm not a guy who's a fan of guns usually. I mean, I like, I enjoy in a video game, obviously, shooty shooty, but as a, as a, as a, as a thing in fiction, if I see a character using a gun, it's not usually appealing to me, but the way he uses his gun is very appealing to me for some reason. But with all this talking about guns, uh, let's go ahead and talk about how Kamen Rider Vulcan actually fights in combat. That's a good question. I've actually started re-watching Zero One, and uh, if I were to describe his fighting style, it's basically just go all in, guns blazing. He just charges. Like, my, my friend Steph, who I'm watching it with said the, the one thing she really, really likes about him is that when he transforms, he doesn't wait. He just goes, he just goes right into it. Sometimes he will sh start shooting his gun before the henshin is even really finished. He's oh. kind of, he's kind of the, he's kind of the, uh, the badass of the show. Alrighty then. So let's start off with the ABCs. His ancestry is that of a human. Now for his background, there's actually a very special background we can use for him, known as Amnesiac. Yes. You can't remember your background. And the special thing about that is that, if you want, the GM controls what they gain from that. That sounds right. And as for his class, we're going to be going with the Gunslinger. Since that's basically the kind of character you want to be if you want to be rolling your gun around and shooting your shoots. Now, you mentioned that he's tend to be a very angry boy and like he's the type of person to throw the first punch, right? Absolutely. He does have a sense of humor. I forgot to mention that detail. He actually really likes cringe jokes, but I don't know how that would manifest in a Pathfinder character sheet. So otherwise, yes, just a big ball of rage. Well, in that case, we can go ahead and take the heritage of the half-orc. This will allow us to take ancestry feats from the orc and the human side. Which is great because for orcs, they have the Iron Fist feet, allowing you to do lethal or non-lethal punches, as well as also be able to push people really hard. That's perfect because he has an alternate form called Punching Kong, which is all about big fist action, just blasting people with his, with his arms. He has, he has a form where he's all about the punching. As a gunslinger, you have to choose a certain way of how you tend to use your gun. And as such, we're going to be going the way of the Pistolero, Basically, the type of people that would twirl their gun around their finger and try to put on a show as they're shooting. He certainly puts on a show for me. I'm very into him. He's a very attractive man. Thank you, yes. Now, onto one of the more meat and potato parts of the character. At second level, we have to choose a second class beat. And for this, we're actually going to be choosing a dedication. Naga on beyond attendant dedication. What this does is that it lets him understand a little bit more about either arcana or nature, and it also gives him a cantrip, which is a very small level feat, but it also lets him use it pretty much at will whenever he can. And we're going to be choosing this cantrip of Tinglefoot. If the monster happens to fail, they get hold in place for a little bit. That's great. Yeah, he's very grapply as well. He, he, gets, he gets in your face, and sometimes he has to literally wrestle with you. So there are, there are occasions when he would need that. Also, is there a way to incorporate the fact that he's in sort of the the, the urban military <laughs> into the, the Pathfinder character? Yes, actually. As we get further on, we'll actually explore ah. that. Uh, now, also at second level, we will be getting him a skill feat, the Intimidating Glare. Which lets him to demoralize opponents with just a glance. Yeah, he can do that. He can do that. Which is great because at level 3, we're going to make his intimidation go from training to expert, letting him do it even easier. And we're also going to be giving him armor proficiency for heavy armor, allowing him to wear the Absolutely. much more durable, steady armor that can pretty much cover his entire body. As it should. And then, protect that boy. Oh yeah, we got to protect him. Because now at 4th level, here comes the fun stuff. At 4th level, you can pick up the class feat of the Masked Familiar, choosing the wolf. Ah! Yep, you get a small spectral wolf that you can call to your side, and for two of three of your actions per turn, you can transform them into a mask which you can wear, or remove. Oh my god, that's awesome. And, if I remember correctly, it takes you one week to train, so you can swap that wolf out for a gorilla if you ever need to. <laughs> he might need to. 
Although, the one time I remember him being defeated, he was in the, the Punching Kong form, so... Maybe, maybe he, maybe he shouldn't wear that. Well, to each their own. Yeah. That's you have your choice. All right, then at level six, you get the Adaptive Mask Familiar, allowing you to add some extra traits to your Mask Familiar there. So that way, if you want, you can make them be able to see in the dark, have a great sense of smell. You can have them be able to heal you if you need them to. That's a good question. I'm not sure what his Mask Familiar would do. I, I, I guess see in the dark, I imagine, just because I assume his suit mask would allow him to do that. I've never really seen a common Rider use their suit like that way, though, I guess. I've never really watched... I've, I've, you've never gotten a point of view shot with uh, them l looking through infrared or anything. They're just sort of seeing things normally. Yeah, you usually see their face whenever we're looking inside the helmet, not outside from their point of view. Right. At level 8, we're going to be getting the class meet of Unexpected Sharpshooter. Now, should for whatever reason you happen to roll an attack, You'll be able to use this action, and then once a day, you can roll both the attack and the damage twice, and take the better of both. And with that, we pretty much have their levels all set to go, and in terms of what they can do for Familiar Wolf, one of the things that I have them set up is to be able to share their senses. Or once every 10 minutes, they can sh share all their senses with, their, with the person who they are bonded with. Wow, so able... that could be very erotic, I'm just saying. It could be, but it's very helpful for me wearing them as a mask. So how does uh, how does that work? What situation would that be beneficial in? Well, the good news is that you're able to give your familiars dark vision or scent, so if you ever need to find someone by a sense of smell or if you're in a dark area and can't see, you can go ahead and swap that on, and then for the next minute you'll be able to see in the dark or get a sense of smell. Uh, As for the weapons, uh, so far I've only got two weapons set up here because of the fact that he only gets so much money in terms of being a level 9 character here, but the first weapon they're going to be getting with is the plus one striking sliding pistol. Yeah, uh, shot rise. <laughs> Pretty much. And they're also getting plus one striking unarmed strikes. This way not only are they good at a range, but they're also good in melee combat as well. Absolutely, absolutely, that checks out. And for their armor, they're getting plus one resilient portable full plate armor. The portable part is really neat because you can pretty much make it as a small little thing that he wears. And for his henchmen... The belt! The belt! Yep. <laughs> yep, you can make it be the belt. And as such, for three action, sorry, for three action points, you're able to pretty much activate it, allowing you to transform into the full plate armor. Yep, that oh, lets you henchin. henchin. <laughs> I'm very happy. I'm glad you're happy. But <laughs> that is pretty much how you would make a Kamen Rider Vulcan, otherwise known as Isamu Fuwa. Mm -hmm. And so, do you have any questions? He sounds. Oh, he sounds very cool. It makes me want to pick up a game and play with him or something like. It makes me want to actually see if I would be able to role play in a tabletop situation as my man. I don't, how would, you know, I, I don't know if you've watched Zero One, but there's oh, the have. whole gimmick, you have? Okay, yes. so there's the whole gimmick of how he's technically not supposed to be able to use his uh, ProRise key or whatever it is mm -hmm. uh, without authorization, and so he breaks it. Is there a way to incorporate him breaking stuff to transform or breaking things like in, in any sense because he tends to like sma snap things open or rip them open yeah as a matter of fact you can actually use that as flavor of saying that's how you're activating your full plate ah mm -hmm. you could carry sort of the equivalent of a of a cassette tape or whatever they are <laughs> and just smash it yeah pretty much no that's really cool i i uh, i've always loved the character creation process of a game like Pathfinder. I've always uh, enjoyed that you can sort of pilfer and, and be inspired by characters that already exist. I've, I've tended usually to create original characters, but it I definitely see the appeal of, uh, of basically transplanting a character from your favorite show and sticking them in a, a setting like that. And, and, and yeah, I think that he would do very well just because he does have that kind of 
the amnesiac sort of RPG protagonist backstory that you can fill in the blanks with, or you know, make them as sad and 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 uh, plot uh, dependent as possible. Uh, but yeah, I, he just sounds like a fun character to play in that world with. It just sounds cool to be able to go in guns blazing and then, you know, if necessary, intimidate the crap out of people with your wolfy <laughs> mask face. And that's kind of the reason why I wanted to make this in general, because of the fact that I know there are a lot of people out there that want to make characters similar to people that already exist as characters, but want to put their own twist. So I figured by showing them something like this, it might inspire them to do that. Yeah, yeah, I've always, there's so much information in the character creation process and that's kind of, it's a double-edged sword of sorts because I, I love the freedom of it, but I'm also very intimidated by the freedom of it because there's so many options, but you made it seem very linear and clear and I, I really did, uh, I got an idea of the, the, the Pathfinder equivalent of my guy here and uh, <laughs> it makes, it, it, it fills my head with ideas and I, I, I do appreciate that. Oh, not a problem. But since we are just about done, uh, why don't you let people know where they can find you, Little Karibo? Sure thing. Uh, you can find me if you search Little Karibo on YouTube. I should be youtube.com slash Little Karibo, but I'm not 100% on that. Just search Little Karibo on YouTube. You can also find me uh, on Twitter. I'm not calling it X. Uh, at Yu-Gi-Oh! T-A-S. Y-U-G-I-O-H-T-A-S. Uh, I post there about Kamen Rider a lot, so you might even see me. For all we know, I might even start a Pathfinder game with this guy, and <laughs> you might see me <laughs> tweeting about it. Uh, you, you can also find uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged Series in brackets official on Facebook. That's our fan page uh, for Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged, and uh, also on Blue Sky. Uh, yes, I'm littlekaribo.bsky.social, where I'm mostly posting cat photos right now because I'm trying to keep it upbeat and positive, and people seem to like that. It's weird. Like people like to feel good, right? <laughs> but thank you so much Th for coming on the show. Thank you for having me on the show, uh, Jesus. I should have asked if I if it's okay to just call you Jesus. I is that cool? Are we are we are we on first name basis? Oh yeah. Excellent. All right, me and the J man <laughs> hanging out. Probably gonna <laughs> play Pathfinder at some point. <laughs> Hopefully someday. That will be fun. It would be. But with that being said and done, thank you for so much for coming by. And may all you disciples be safe and be awesome out there. Bye! <laughs>